takeaway technique. If I were to give you $5,000 for this car, if I were to give you $168 million for this house, if I were to buy this shirt today, I need you, and you add something. You pull something else in. You take, if I close on the house by Friday, the only price I can give you is this. I'm ready to close. It's cash, and I can close the deal by Friday. We're ready because we're cash buyers. I can do it right now. I don't have to ask a mortgage company. All we got to do is run title, and we'll close that sucker Friday. You have a deal. But if I close it by Friday, this is the price. If I had a friend of mine used to buy uh, investment property, and he used this all the time. He would walk through a home that the people were selling, and they appeared to be desperate to sell, and he would look for the item that was out of place. It was an item of pride that they obviously liked. I mean, they're, they're living in a, a dump of a house, and they got a $40,000 bass boat out there, right? Or they've got, they're, they're living in a little dump of a house, and they got an $800 refrigerator. You know what I'm saying. And it's something that's out of place. And he would say, well, you know, I see that you're asking I don't know, make up a number, $100,000 for this house. And I can buy the house for $100,000, but if I do, we're, you're going to have to throw in that bass boat. And be going, oh, no, I can't throw in the bass boat. That bass boat, you can't take my bass boat. That's my, that's my baby. You don't want my baby. I can't throw in the baby with my house. And, he's, and, he's, and so then the way he turned it was, is, is they would say all of that, and he'd say, well, if I don't take the bass boat, then what else are you going to give me? We're going to have to come off on price. As if he ever had the bass boat see how the deal works. So if I, if I do this, if we move forward in this way, then we're going to add this to the deal. I'm going to get a little better deal. I'm going to get a little, a little another nibble in there. The second key to opening the door to huge bargains is that you must have patience. I got to tell you, this is my hardest one. I do it as a matter of discipline, but it is not my nature to have patience. My wife can have patience. She can wait. That's one of her strengths in this. She'll wait them out. She'll just sit down and go, <laughs> but I mean, she can, she can wait two months, she can wait two years, and me, I want it, I want it right now, and I'm tired of fooling with you. Again, Roger Fisher's book, he says the people that win negotiations have the most information and the most patience. The most information, the most patience. International negotiations, the United States team comes in and they rent a suite of hotel rooms to begin the negotiations. Team comes in from the Far East to begin the negotiations, they buy a villa. We're going to be here a while different mentality. They're, 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 they're there to wait this thing out. We're going to play long term for keeps. Again, don't get married to the purchase because you lose your patience. You get this, I want it, I need it, I need it, I need to get the fever going. And, and that gets you into a big mess. Back when I was in the real estate business, I had a young lady working for me and, and she and her husband were looking for their first home and they didn't want just any home. They wanted a home with some acreage and they wanted a certain design of a home. They had this idea of a certain place out in the country that they wanted. And I, I told her, I said, we're buying foreclosures all the time. If you wait, we can get you a deal. But you're going to have to wait. It's going to take time. And every so often, I mean, another month would go by and they'd be out looking at houses and they're looking at some retail deal and I'd have to talk them down. Don't no, wait, wait, wait. I talked them down for a year and a half. And I talked them down 20 times in a year and a half. Talked them out of buying. I'll tell you what, then I stumbled upon one. A credit union had foreclosed on this place, and we bought it for them. The appraisal on the property, I wrote it down, was $134,500. We had the house appraised when we were buying it. We were able to purchase it for $54,000. Patience pays off. You'll never get a bargain if you don't ask for it. It's vital that you shop around, even for banking and insurance. Let's talk about banking for a minute. Every bank has their own fee schedule. Read and make sure you understand everything before you open up the account. How many checks can you write? Do they have free checking for students? How much do ATM withdrawals cost? What interest is paid on your balance on your checking, if any? What's the penalty if I go below the minimum balance? Insurance rates? Now they're out of control for people your age. You are getting that good driver discount, right? Yeah, right. Did you know that you can call different insurance companies and get free quotes? Don't assume you're getting the best rate. In fact, it's a good idea to call for quotes every couple of years, even if you're happy with your insurance. Ask them what discounts they offer. It might be worth buying the club or something like that if you end up saving money. If you don't want to change companies, ask them if they can match the quote from the other insurance agency. If, what you have to do is you have to hunt it down and kill it and then drag it home. Be an aware consumer. 
understand everything before you sign up for it. Third key to opening the door to huge bargains is you must know where to find the deals. You know, it must know where to look for the deals. Now, I'm an old Tennessee boy. I grew up in Tennessee, and in Tennessee, when we would go camping back in the woods somewhere when I was a kid, many times there'd be a nice, beautiful mountain stream there. Gorgeous kind of cold water. You guys know what I'm talking about. Say yes. yes. And we'd go out there and we'd, you know, we'd have our shorts on or we'd roll up our pants and we'd wade out there about to our knees and we'd be looking. And we would be hunting for what we in Tennessee call crawdads. Little, little freshwater shrimpy looking things for those of you that hadn't ever had the pleasure. And, and, and so we'd be looking for, and of course they hide under rocks, don't they? And so you'd turn over the rock and the current of the stream coming by would move the silt away that was stirred up when you turned over the rock and there sat the little guy. Now, when you first start doing it, you grab him behind the pinchers, but if you're really cool later, you're a real man, you just grab him and let him pinch you, you know? <laughs> but after doing that for a little while, even as a little kid, eight or 10 years old or six years old out there, you begin to say, hey, that rock has something under it. That one won't. And you can kind of identify by the way they're sitting there on the other rocks, whether or not there's probably a crawdaddy under there that we're going to be able to get or not. Bargains are the same way. They, they lay in certain places. The rocks look a certain way. And, and as you begin to get a nose for hunting bargains and you live your life looking for bargains, you, you'll start to go, oh, there's one over there. Of course, the other thing you can do is you can trade something of value, your goods or just your services. How many of you have ever bartered for something? I've done a lot of bartering in my life, and it's, it's very valuable. Back when we first got in the radio business, we would take some of the radio ads and trade them for something, and that was a, a fun thing to do. We're way past that and aren't able to do that these days, but I kind of miss it. It was kind of, because my wife used to call it free stuff, and I'm like, hey, I'm working here. It's not free. You can do things like just get you a little gift certificate like this. Sometimes when you're giving gifts, everyone thinks they have to give money. Why don't you give of yourself a little bit? Maybe you have a service and you want to give of that service. My daughters have given babysitting to their youth pastor. What a wonderful gift at Christmas. They would rather have that than some little trinket. Okay, I'm going to give him one of the two of these and redeem it. You know, as long as we can work it in our schedule, we'll be there and redeem this. And they get to go do babysitting for the youth pastor. What a great idea. Some of you dads, here's an awesome idea. You got teenage daughters? Give them one of these and put date night on there. They would love to have their dad take them out on a date. Very, very valuable. Much more valuable than money or than stuff from the mall. And so you can trade in a lot of different ways and create really cool, cool ideas. But we've got to look at the places to find great deals. Now, one of the great places, always look to try to buy from individuals. The reason you want to buy from individuals is simply this. Individuals have an item that is not there for profit. It is in the way. You know what I mean? If a bicycle store has a bicycle for sale, they paid a certain amount of dollars for that bicycle. And from an accounting standpoint, that's called their cost of goods sold. Have you ever heard that? Say yes. yes. Okay. So they paid, I don't know, $100 for the bicycle. And if you come in and you use all the techniques in the world, you use cash and you do all these other things, you threaten them with their competitor, they're not going to sell the bicycle for less than they paid for it. They'd be losing money. How dumb would that be? They will just sit there. And so you can offer them $98 and do a little dance or whatever, and they're not going to take $98 because they paid $100. Now, you can get down close and let them make a small amount of profit, but they're not going to dip into lost land if they're smart. Businesses don't do that. An individual, however, it, what they paid for it doesn't enter into it. It's in the way. I had some bicycles one time, and I don't know if this ever happens to you, but we parked them in the garage between the boat and the car. And the stupid things kept falling over. And they were either scratching my boat or scratching my car. It really didn't matter at this point what we paid for them. We had a garage sale. I put them out back and I put two for ten. <laughs> I want them out of my garage. And, and, you know, get rid of I mean, this lady walked up and said, well, you take five. Yeah, just drive them off. Just get them. You know, they're in the way. When you buy from an individual, what they paid for the car four years ago doesn't enter into it. When you buy from a car lot what they paid for it two weeks ago at the car auction does enter into it because they're in the business to make a profit. And so individuals are one thing you always want to try to look to when you're buying things.
always look at estate sales. Estate sales are fun. Good idea. Public auctions. Now be careful with public auctions because they get you excited and you'll pay too much. And you got to know what stuff's worth. When we first started our business years ago, I was looking for a copier to, to get our business started with, a little cheap copier of some kind. So I went down to the office supply store and I went to the copier company and I looked at all the different copiers and I knew what copiers were costing. Different brands, I had it down because I, I had been shopping, you know what I'm saying? Then I went to a big auction, big office supply place went broke, bankruptcy auction, and they were auctioning them off. And there's a whole lot of copiers down through there. And the auctioneer's going down through there and he's got a power cord and he's plugging them in. They'd come to life and people would bid. And they were bidding. They were, some of them were going higher than you could buy them retail for. People were just excited. And they're going down through there and they're going down through there and they're going down through there. And he comes to the one I really kind of wanted because it had the feeder thing on top. It would, you know, expand, contract, bigger shrink, do all this stuff and all the little bells and whistles, you know. And I guess the plug didn't go in good because it didn't come on. And auctioneers sometimes, they're all in the excitement too. And he's, before he realized it, he said something stupid. He goes, oh, well, here's one. This will make a good boat anchor. And, and these copiers have been going for three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 down through here. This is a copier that I had looked at as $4,100 if I bought it used and reconditioned from the local copier place. $4,100. So I said, 50 bucks for the boat anchor. And you know, you're kind of standing around like this is a copier. There's a group of people standing around right here like this. And this guy across from me starts bidding and we're bidding back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, he bids $200. And I don't know what got into me. I just had one of those moments. I said, have you got a boat? <laughs> Fool quit bidding. I bid $225 and bought it, and it, I plugged it in, and it worked perfect for a $4,000 copier. But you've got to know what you're bidding on, and, and for $225, I took a risk, didn't I? I could have thrown $225 away. By the way, I was telling a gang just a little while ago, I, we were talking about car stories. I bought a car at an auction one time for 100 bucks, and it cost me $75 to have it hauled off. <laughs> so this doesn't always work out, does it? So you, but you got to, but, you know, that kind of was offset by the copier deal, so I'm still ahead. So have some fun with this process. Get on the mailing list to some of the auctions. Visit their website, some of the auction houses, and watch what they're doing. Now, don't buy a bunch of junk you don't need. That's not the point. But if you're in the market for a leather couch, become an expert on leather couches and then go bid on one and get you a deal. Couponing. The last year we tracked it, and we track it pretty regularly around our house because it's kind of a game. Sharon is the coupon queen. The last year we tracked it was a couple of years back, and she saved with coupons on things we were going to buy anyway. Hear that part? <laughs> things we were going to buy anyway, $700 in a year. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Garage sales. We all know about that one. You can get stuff at garage sales. You can get deals at garage sales. You can buy a car on a repo lot, can't you? I bought a car one time. $17,000 was the private sale appraisal on the car, meaning if you went online and looked it up, it'd be a $17,000 car. Retail, probably a little more than that, but that's really about what the car was worth. And it wouldn't start. Again, same kind of a thing like the copier. So I took a chance. I bid up to $11,000 on that car. I bought it for $11,000. $6,000 under what the car was worth. The only thing wrong with it was that $6,000 battery was bad. <laughs> now, I wouldn't have picked a brown car. If you got a brown car, I'm not mad at you, but that, if I had gone and selected and ordered a car, I might not have ordered a brown car. But for six grand, I drove that thing a long time. It was a nice car, a $17,000 car for 11,000. You can drive that for a couple of years before it depreciates down to what you paid for it even. That's a good idea. Flea markets. Can you get a good deal at a flea market? Absolutely. You know that, don't you? Refunding. My wife also does that. That kind of goes with the couponing thing. Don't forget to keep those receipts and do the refunding. A lot of those little nickels add up to be dollars if you watch what you're doing. Foreclosures. Be careful with foreclosures. There's all these characters out there selling how to get rich in foreclosure real estate. It's a good way to go broke is what it is. Be very, very careful. And I strongly recommend that you do not buy a foreclosure at the foreclosure sale until you really, 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 really have been doing many, many deals and know what you're doing. But can you buy a home from a seller who's motivated because they're about to lose it? You bet you can. You can get great deals that way. And it's a way to look. Now, you may not be exactly the house you were thinking about, but if it's thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 difference, then oh, we can probably work through this. Pawn shops. Everything in a pawn shop is stolen. Oh, you watch too much TV. <laughs> in the real world, they check every item with the police department. Pawn shops are highly regulated, but it's a great place to 
buy things. I buy a lot of stuff at pawn shops. You people that are gamers and want to do your electronic games and all this kind of stuff, great deals on used games there. No question about that. Online auctions, stuff like eBay. And can you get burned there? Say yes. yes. So you have to be careful. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to be thoughtful. But can you occasionally slip up on and get a great deal? I have. I've bought stuff on eBay at a great deal, and you can do that. I've also bought stuff on eBay, and I wished I hadn't. And if, you hadn't, if you've been on eBay much, you've had that happen to you too, okay? So just be careful, study, think about it, learn a little bit about the process. It's not that bad. Classified ads, that's going to hook you up with the individuals doing things. How about consignment sales? Like, yes, experienced clothing won't kill you. <laughs> now, we don't buy consignment sale clothing anymore because we lived like no one else for a while. Now we live like no one else. But I'll tell you what, just the other day, my wife made $378 taking our old clothing down and selling it at the consignment sale. And so, you know, this is real stuff. Conventions. This is one of my favorite that people don't do often enough. If there's a cookware convention in town, a lot of times the guy working at the, or the gal working at the sales thing, they've got all their stuff setting out, and they're not going to pack it up and ship it back across the nation somewhere. The shipping costs more than their cost of goods sold in that item. So as the convention closes down after being there for three or four days, they will virtually give you their sample stuff that's laying there to get rid of it so they don't have to ship it home. So be hanging around about the last day and go, what are you going to do with that? And you'd be amazed what someone will give you or sell to you very, very inexpensively. Now, how many of you have bought something like I'm talking about? You've negotiated for it or you know where to look for deals or you've had patience and gotten a good deal at one time or another in your life? Please, everybody raise your hand because I know surely you have not paid retail for everything your whole life, right? So the point is not that we have never done this. The point is I want you to do this all the time. People who are wealthy, this is a way of life for them. They live like this all the time. They think about this all the time. Look for the win-win. Negotiate everything. Have patience. Think about where to find the deals. And you'll have more financial peace.